Olds comes up with a bold scheme to defeat the mix, dubbed Operation Bolo. The main plan for Operation Bolo, which some historians describe as an electronic Trojan horse maneuver, was to trick MiGs into attacking what they would think was some vulnerable F-105s. F-4 pilots will fly into North Vietnam, disguised as a strike force of F-105s. They'll be armed with the THUD's radar jamming gear. But instead of bombs, they'll have missiles for air-to-air -air combat. The MiGs would come up after us and get a deadly reception. After weeks of planning, the daring mission gets the green light, with dozens of pilots' lives in the balance. January 2nd, 1967, H hour for Operation Bolo. The ruse to trick North Vietnam's Air Force gets underway. As F-4 pilots, including Chappie James and Robin Olds, strap themselves in. Even the commander is nervous about the biggest gamble of his career. I felt a searing pain in the pit of my stomach was already drenched in sweat by the time I reached my bird. Dear God, please let me lead these wonderful men into a successful battle and safely back home. Car control, car control, come up channel two zero. The first to launch are F-105s. They'll suppress ground fire. Electronic warfare planes, known as Big Eyes, will orbit nearby to detect threats and jam North Vietnamese radar. Then, 56 Phantoms take off from bases in Thailand and South Vietnam. The plan calls for them to take turns sweeping over airfields to lure the mix into attacking. But the F-4s from Da Nang run into bad weather, and they turn around, cutting the force by a third. It leaves the entire mission in the hands of Robin Olds and the Wolf Pack. Olds flight fuels up and activates the radar jammers borrowed from the F-105s. This jamming pod gave off a certain electronic signature that the MiGs could detect. The F-4 Phantoms also flew in the same formations and used the same call signs as the F-105s would typically use. That way, if the MiGs had picked up any communications, they would think that it was that group of F-105s that they were used to seeing in that area. In the target area. In the target area. And the MiGs fall for it. Chappie calls a MiG-21 on my flight that's popped up out of the undercast. I break hard just in time to see another MiG at my 11 o'clock. MiGs are popping out of the cloud deck everywhere. Old spots a third enemy fighter. I got up on top of him and half upside down, waited for him to complete his turn, and timed it so I continued down behind him. Frankly, I'm not sure he ever saw me. Meanwhile, two MiGs attacked the second flight, led by Chappie James. The MiG broke left, and for a split second, I could clearly see the pilot and the bright red star markings. I immediately started a barrel roll to gain separation for attack, but he broke right into the flight path of my number two. James's wingman gets the victory. In just 13 minutes, U.S. fighters downed seven North Vietnamese MiGs without a single loss. That a deliberately planned fighter sweep went just as we'd hoped. The MiGs came up, the MiGs were aggressive, we tangled, they lost. This is a huge morale boost for the Wolf Pack. They come out of this celebrating, they're excited. What Operation Bolo does, it shows that in the hands of skilled pilots in the right conditions, these Phantoms can wreak havoc against the North Vietnamese Air Force. 
the Wolf Pack wipes out almost half of North Vietnam's supersonic MiG-21s and gleefully tallies the victories. In Vietnam, you're flying against communist forces, so it makes sense. You paint the red communist star as your victory symbol. Anyone who sees that underneath the canopy is going to know that you've got an air-to-air -air victory, and that's a rare thing in Vietnam. That's something to brag about.